NASCAR rolls into the Toyota Speedway here this week to start the second race of the playoffs. Wait, wait. Oh, it's not the Toyota Speedway. It's the Kansas Speedway. Is there really a difference anymore? Oh, okay. There is a difference? Okay. Okay. It's Kansas, apparently. <laughs> Hey guys, Brian here, and we are back for Fantasy Friday. I know I missed last week to start the playoffs. That was my bad. I just kind of lost track of time, got busy, and we're back. So, we have got ourselves a pretty good race coming up this weekend, and despite the uh, joking intro, as you guys will be able to tell over on the uh, side over here, we have got ourselves the uh, betting odds, as we always do in this, in this series. So, um... And as you can see with that list, if you guys haven't already noticed, sit, uh, say, there's quite a bit of Toyota at the front of it. And for pretty good reasons. Denny Hamlin won this race in the spring. Last year, 23-11 won both races at this track. Kurt Busch in the spring, and then, uh... Uh, so Kurt Busch won it in the spring, and then Bubba Wallace drove, driving the same 45 car ends up winning it in the fall, so... Again, it's been a very much a Toyota racetrack. I would expect to see the Toyotas be pretty strong again this weekend. If there is someone who can beat the uh, Toyotas, though, it might be Kyle. Larson or Bush? Probably either one. I would probably say Larson, and obviously based on the betting odds, it looks like Larson's favored more. Wouldn't count out Kyle Busch. You, uh, over the last few years, he's gotten much better at this track than he used to be right at the start of his career, up until about 2014, I think it was, was when he really started turning his career around at Kansas. Now, granted, a lot of that was with Toyota, but he was also pretty competitive here in the spring. So, I wouldn't rule out Kyle Busch, of course. He's up there on the odds, too. William Byron, as well, that Chevy connection. He's got five wins on the season. It's hard to count him out. So, uh, yeah, looking at the uh, list of uh, people on the odds there, yeah, some pretty good bets. Uh, again, Toyota drivers galore. Uh, Chris Buescher, it's hard to count him out. He was in position to potentially win a race at Kansas a couple years ago if it weren't for uh, them deciding to not throw the caution. So, yay. And then Ross Chastain is on there for whatever reason. Not sure why he's up that high. Mm, I'd probably say he should be down a little bit further, especially looking a little further down the list. There's Others I'd probably put up above him. But hey, you know what? The odds makers, they can say Ross is the uh, 10th best driver here. But uh, yeah, might not be my pick. He might be one higher up on the odds list to avoid. Although, he does need points to make it to the next round of the playoffs. And that's going to be a heavy feature throughout the remainder of these rate or the remainder of these videos is going to be who, the people who need points to make the playoffs. Because... Uh, trying to point your way through the rounds, that's going to be the guys who might be able to net you a lot of points, especially at places like Charlotte, at Talladega. These are the people who would stay out the extra little bit to try and earn those stage points versus maybe putting themselves in a better spot for the end of the race. Yeah. Like, if you have a late caution, if you have a caution late in the stage at Charlotte, somebody who needs points might stay out to try and steal the win versus pitting and leaving themselves in a better spot for the end of the race, so, um, depending on who ends up needing points, which, um, obviously will be a factor, so guys like Christopher Bell, Bubba Wallace, um, two Toyota drivers up in that mix, definitely some guys to, uh, highlight, uh, Joey Logano, a driver not on that list, um, he's usually shows up at, uh, at a track like uh, Kansas, I probably would have put him at 10 if I was personally making the odds list, but I d apparently people don't factor my opinion as much because they haven't seen this show yet. But uh, yeah, Joey Logano would be another one I would probably say should definitely be in that list. He's ranked 13th on the actual odds list. so But he always tends to show up at Kansas, especially in the uh, playoffs. And after last week, he needs a good run at Kansas to try and Put himself back in position for the playoffs, so 
those are some of your uh, guys higher up the odds list that I think are some good bets. Now let's go talk about some of the uh, dark horses that maybe if you guys want to try and save some uses on people where you only have five uses of all your players and there's ten races, you can't use them all. So let's talk about some guys who might be able to save you a pick or two. Okay, so over here now I have got a list of some of the more dark horse type competitors. Some of these guys are playoff guys, others are not, and some of them I didn't even realize were in this race, but are worth noting because they are part-timers and might save, you might be able to save a pick here or there, and or they looked good in their limited starts so far this year. So, uh, real quickly, I want to address the first one, or uh, the first couple of names on that list, and mainly they're up there because they're playoff contenders. Ricky Snaz Jr., only minus four points. And if he can stay within range of that playoff going into Bristol, I think he stands a pretty good shot. So he is going to be clawing and scratching for everything he can. Because, again, if he can get that JTG Doherty car to the second round of the playoffs, that will massively help his, his uh, just kind of the confidence for that entire organization going forward. Michael McDowell, after a bad race at... Uh, at Darlington, which was supposed to be his one super safe or his one safer race going into this round, uh, certainly does not look like a safe pick now. So he's 19 below. He's got to kind of throw a little bit more caution to the wind. But I figured I'd mention him anyway because I always mention Michael McDowell, big Michael McDowell fan. But uh, yeah, he's got a long way to go, and he needs as many points at Kansas and Bristol this week, the next two weeks to make it up. Um. But yeah, some other guys on that list, though. You got guys like Carson Hosevar, who impressed mightily in that 42 car last week. Honestly, both the Legacy Motor Club cars looked pretty good uh, last week. So Carson Hosevar, he's a guy that Chevy um, wants in a car, and supposedly sounds like he may have a spot in Xfinity or Cup next year for sure. Uh, um. Possibly that Spire number 77 car, if Ty Dillon doesn't keep that, could potentially go to host of ours. So, uh, certainly looks like um, somewhere that if Chevy can develop him over these last few races, it's starting to sound more and more like he may get all the uh, remaining 42 rate, uh, car, uh, races in the 42 car. So, good job for host of our. Hopefully he can manage that along with his truck series schedule where he races tonight in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Um, some other names down the list to mention, you got guys like Corey LaJoy and Ty Gilland, who tend to, uh, surprise at some of these intermediate races. Uh, Todd Gilland, again, he's had his confidence reinvigorated by the team themselves because they have gone and, uh, they've given him a contract, you know, that he was not necessarily a guarantee because you have Zane Smith in the truck series that looks very good for that same team, so... But the team let them know that he, they're confident in his ability by giving him that contract. So let's see if Zane, if uh, Todd Gillen can go and show that he was a good investment. I would, I really want to see that for him. Uh, similarly, Harrison Burton sounds like he's very close to a contract extension. That's another driver who could be going into this one and a good performance here after a fairly good performance last week. Um. Before his crash, he ended up getting uh, crashed out, but he was having a very good run most of uh, last week at Darlington. Uh, he sounds like he may be only a couple days away from signing a brand new contract with Wood Brothers to stay in that 21 car. So, again, one one or two more good, good results throughout this season could be what the difference between making that deal or not. Then a couple more Xfinity guys that are getting their first or potentially one of a few looks at the uh, NASCAR Cup Series this year. You've got Cole Custer uh, driving that 51 car. He has not looked overly impressive, and honestly, nobody in that 51 car, no matter how prestigious they may be, even a 2002 Cup Series Rookie of the Year, you know, didn't look overly impressive last week in Ryan Newman, so I'm not putting a whole lot of stock in Cole Custer, but he's someone I wanted to mention because he is a part-timer, and if he does run well here, it could be the, he could save a use for one of you guys. <clears throat> and then the last one, I did not even know he was in this race until I was looking at the roster. The BJ McLeod Motorsports car is being driven by Sheldon Creed. 
So I wanted to make mention of it because I did, I honestly did not even know that he was driving this car this weekend until I looked at the odds list. So, uh, yeah. And if I didn't know, I'm pretty certain you guys didn't know either unless you had seen it on Twitter or something. But I, I've been on Twitter and I have not seen it. So, yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and um, start assembling my roster and I will... Uh, be back with you guys in just a minute. Real quick, before I put up my uh, my picks, I did forget to mention a couple of drivers in the middle of the field in terms of the odds that I know some of you guys are probably yelling at me in the comments for. So before you guys do that, if it's not already too late, um, Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman, their teammates are rated pretty highly. Chase Elliott's won this race in the past, and Alex Bowman has won at Kansas as well in his uh, career, uh, I think. Actually... No, I know. He's, sorry, he won Chicagoland and almost won Kansas in the same year. So, But uh, Alex Bowman has looked very good at Kansas. So both of those drivers, I would say, are very much options. Again, it just kind of depends on how much you're trying to conserve picks. Uh, where it's the playoffs, it's not really the time to be conserving picks, for me at least. I've spent most of the regular season trying to save picks to make sure I got to the end of Week 26. So... Uh, this is kind of the time to start going all out. Again, maybe in the round of 12 would be the time to maybe look at saving a pick or two. But uh, for the most part, my my roster is made up of a bunch of the guys I think are going to do absolutely the best and not really thinking about saving picks much at all. So, without further ado, over there, there you go. That is my roster. Barring any last-minute changes for the uh, roster, that should be how my lineup looks going into the NASCAR Cup Series race at Kansas. So, as you guys might notice, there's um, a bit of a theme, and I kind of mentioned it. The 2311 Toyotas. I have both of them in there. Uh, 2311 swept this race last year. Both drivers need points. But, uh, Bubba's right below that cut line. And Tyler Reddick, I believe, is plus like 20 points or so on the cut line. So... Uh, while he's in an okay spot, being able to solidify and be more safe going into Bristol, which last year was a wild card with the tires going down, certainly would be nice. Uh, Kyle Larson. He was so close to winning this race in the spring. He has been so good at this track. He is probably the top Chevy driver at this track. Even though I definitely like Kyle Busch more for this one, I used him last week at Darlington. I can't really afford to use him two. I'm going to try not to use him two weeks in a row here, especially where he's got a lot of other good tracks coming up. And then we've got uh, the rest of my lineup. I've got MTJ in there. I've got, um, I've got MTJ in there. He's a Toyota winner. He's won uh, Kansas so many times in the past. Mr. Mile and a Half sometimes has been his has been kind of the moniker he's had. So, yeah, MTJ, no doubt, should be on, on at least if you believe in him. Yeah, he's on my roster, and I think you guys should, would be missing the trick to not have him in there. And then my final two picks, I just kind of went with comfort, and, I mean, it's hard to deny that you know, the RFK guys are on a hot streak, and I think that streak's going to continue with uh, Chris Buescher earning some more points. He's 27 above the cut line. And if he can be nice and sit stable going into Bristol next week, where he won last year, I think that'd be a great day for him to... I think that would give him all the comfort in the world to go out there and try and win again and earn some more playoff points to go into the uh, round of 12. And Joe Logano, as I mentioned... This is kind of the big race where he usually has a big coming out party and sets up for his runs to the championship like what he had last year and what he had in 2018. He has shown a lot of speed at this race multiple times in the past. So, I mean, even during 2020, he got out in front of Kevin Harvick yeah, and managed to outrun Kevin Harvick that race, which ultimately led to Harvick getting eliminated from the playoffs in 2020. So... Again, Joey Logano, he he was just kind of a comfort pick, gut feeling. I think he might have something on, on the field this week, but for the most part, I stuck with my guns. Toyota, Kyle Larson, and then a couple of comfort slash gut feeling picks. So, of course, let me know who you guys have in your uh, fantasy rosters for the NASCAR Fantasy Live game. Um, I am going to include a link to join my, uh, my personal uh, fantasy... Uh, 
my personal NASCAR fantasy roster. So if you guys want to join in on that league, of course, check the description down below. Of course, I know I should have done this during last week's video, but I lost track of time. But yeah, hopefully you guys will join that and we can have some fun playing against each other. But until next time, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in tonight's live stream of the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race at um, at Kansas. But until next time, I will see you guys next video, live stream, whatever you guys had to do with the rest of your day. Have a great day, everybody, and goodbye! <laughs>